testing. Hey everybody. I'm using my uh, I'm using my terrible headphones right now. My these earbuds. So I can wear the hat. <laughs> the hat's more important than uh, good quality uh, headphones. Uh, let's see what we got today. <laughs> Patrick. Yeah, I mean, never underestimate the importance of the hat. Gets you right in the mood. I've been wearing this for an hour, by the way. Um, so today I'm working on some UI stuff. Um, that's gonna be the main focus and I'm gonna work on it for a bit. I, I don't know how far we're gonna get. Um, but let me just show you what I've got so far. So when you go into the game, right, there's a start menu. And one thing I did was I added this. So there's the editor and you can make your own levels and then you can play those levels, right? And then there's a start level, start button, that takes you to the regular, you know, built-in campaign. And it's gonna be something like this. I'm actually, I'm gonna get rid of this. This background has to go. I was thinking originally, you know, it'd be like, I made this a long time ago. Uh, and I had a picture in my mind of it kind of rotating and doing all this stuff, uh, but that's, I'm not gonna do that. Um, what I'm thinking of doing is making this more of a holographic type uh, user interface where you have like this square pop-up or rectangular pop-up that shows like a like a screen right and it's gonna be divided into sectors and the levels are gonna be on the different sectors and then over here on the right you'll see a window with a little um, like more information about the level you have selected and then over here I'm thinking I'm gonna put the lieutenant uh, you know, telling you stuff, maybe just hanging out. I don't know. She'll uh, she'll chime in and say something. So it'll be like you're on board the ship, looking at a display, kind of a thing. Um. Yeah, and that'll let me put. So I need to do. I need to do new art for this background. I need to do new art for these buttons, and then I need to put the buttons on here. Right, and one nice thing about this system is now I can actually place the buttons, right? I can put each level on the map so you can see them all. There's 24 of them now. Um, so I'm thinking dividing into four sectors, six levels per sector. Um, you're gonna see all the levels at once, but they won't all be unlocked. <clears throat> and then, um, you know, that'll give you some motivation to You see how far the journey is gonna be and you can see things unlocking as you go. And I'm thinking of arranging them so that um, uh, each sector, when it, as you complete the levels, it like draws out a astronomical sign of some kind, like a zodiac sign or something like that. Controller button screen with overlapping lines. Yeah, I think, well, so there was a problem where um, this this screen, you could, you could click stuff that was behind it. So another benefit of separating these out, like before you could go into user campaigns and then you go into levels and there was a bunch of overlapping UIs and that's all gone now because it's just one screen and the user, the user campaigns will be a whole separate screen. So it solves that problem of having, you know, all this overlapping UI stuff that I'm showing and hiding and whatever. It takes a lot of the complexity away. Actually, the first thing I did when I separated these out was I ended up deleting about half the code. So that was pretty nice. <clears throat> um, right. So I think the first thing I want to do is... Let's put the lieutenant in here, and then I'm gonna put a. I need to make a, a replacement for this, and then a panel over here. 
Maybe it'll be... You know what? Maybe, maybe it'll be a um, big rectangle here and then one panel here and that can have the lieutenant in it and then one panel here with the information about the level in it or maybe the information up here and the lieutenant down here in the corner. Back button can stay there. So the first thing I want to do is I want to kind of figure out the spacing for these things. So <clears throat> I'm going to create a big box basically first. Um, and a box and a box. And I know this whole screen is 640 by 360. Uh, so that'll constrain my proportions. But just in case, um, I'm going to take a screenshot of this. And that way I can use that as a reference. Uh, yeah, like that. Oh, this was the, you guys remember I was working on this last time. So I, I did a little bit of work on this too. So this is the, the normal controls. And then, where is it? Here's the classic controls. So I moved the thrust over to the side. It was down here. I moved it over here so it's not, those lines aren't overlapping. I think that looks nice. Anyway, so that's done for now. Uh, so I need a 640 by 360 and I'm going to paste, I'm going to import, oh actually, hmm. I just realized I, so when I exported this screenshot, it's a 1920 by 1080, so I'm going to switch this back to uh, Turn full screen off and then do it again. I want this. I want this. Save, save. And then this can be is there an import? Obviously that did something I wasn't expecting. Let me just open that. And then I want to canvas size it to 640 by 360. And That's fine. That's close enough. Close enough. Yeah, that's fine. So <clears throat> I want to have like a, I'm going to create a new layer here. I want to have like a Something like that, and something like that. Hmm. Maybe something like, uh, maybe something like this. This can have the name of the level in it. And something like this with the sectors. And then I can have the lieutenant there, and I can have your stats on the level there. Now I can move the back button down a little bit, so it's just down here. I think I can get rid of this. I don't think I need that. When you hover over the level, it can it can just pop the name of the level above it. Hmm. No, I'm going to keep it up here um, because the level names can get actually quite long. And when you have a level over here, it's going to overlap these other panels. 
<clears throat> so yeah I'll just leave it I'll leave that and then this this can get divided into um, four sectors something like this and I can have you know I'll put like a cool little grid and parsecs and I don't know astronomical units and things like that on here and I'll make the whole user interface semi-transparent so you can see the background still kind of flying by and I think I will make it yeah I'm gonna make it extend all the way to the bottom here and then just have the back button overlapping it that'll be fine all right let's do that Let me take that away let's do that so we can see an overview of our work And then let's just draw, let's just do a rough version of it here. Uh, so I want to do Ugh. I want to do from right here. Oops. like that and then I want to do something like that right so I'll erase this and let's do a line here like that and then I can erase that and that and I'll erase this and this two pixels let me close this and I'll erase two pixels here and here all right so then this thing will be like this And I want to put a line, something like this. And two pixels. And another line right there. All right, there's my panels. That works. Uh, so let me get rid of that background. Don't need this anymore. Oops. And I want to take this dark color and just fill in, fill in. No. I want to do another layer. Oh, this is actually going to be kind of a little tricky. So I need to um, select. I'm going to select the space inside of here. And what's it doing? Contiguous, 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 contiguous. And then create a new layer and fill all those in with this dark color. And then I put it on a new layer so that I can uh, change its transparency of that whole layer down to, you know, 50%. Right? And I can already know, I already know I'm going to have to do an adjustment here, but I'm not sure how much. So I'm just going to put it in and then we'll see. This will be in my level chooser scene, level chooser folder. We'll call this um, 
UI panels, like that. And then I can go back in here and change this. I'll add a texture rect, make it full rect. And I'll call it background, and we'll put in our new texture. Level chooser texture UI panels. There we go. So if I run this, there we go. I don't like it going all the way to the edge, but let's do two things at once. First, I want to add in um, a portrait of the lieutenant. I've got all those portraits here. Put her right here. So this needs to move down um, quite a bit, actually. Let me let me put her in here. Copy paste oops, new no, new paste. Right, I want her to be something like right there. So I need to move this stuff down. To like that. And this will also move down. Mm, that's fine. I can just keep that the way it is for now. Uh, See, this will be out. Oh, ugh. Outlines, shading. So my outlines, I need to put in. You fix these lines. Fix this line. And delete, 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 delete. That, like that, and then my shading, I want to delete all of this. Let's make the eraser a little bigger. Okay, I want to erase all of that, and I want to fill in all of this. Then I can delete her. Uh, oh, wait, I can't actually delete her because I the other thing I wanted to do was move these things away from the edge, right? So, oh, goodness. Let me, let me delete this. This must be an easy way to do this. Um, let's move in all the edges first. So I'm going to move this side. One, oh, one two. And I'll move the whole top down. One, two. And I'll move this side in one, two, and I'll move the bottom in one, two. Then we'll see if we've got room for the lieutenant still. She can fit right there. And I'm going to move this down again. Grab the right layer. She's taking up a lot of room. It's fine. 
she adds character and personality. And then what I'm going to do, instead of having that separate layer for the backgrounds, what I'm going to do is um, just change the opacity of the fill and do it just like that. Save it again. Nope, let's turn her off. Save it again. All right, and now let me move the back button a little bit. Let's readjust this. And we can move the lieutenant to be right there. See how that looks. Kind of like that. This back button's awful big. But yeah, I kind of like that. I think this this background needs to be a little darker. It's not quite as opaque as I'd like. Um, better that's better so I may move this back button around a little bit because I don't like the way it's sitting there and um, but I think I like that general layout and I need a you know there's gonna be a lot of polish and refinement going on here uh, but first thing I want to do is I want to add a label here so let's do that We'll call that label. I will call that the um, level name. And we will put it center top. Move it down to here. Do that. Yo, Nick. Oh no, now I feel the pressure. I'm doing a UI in front of Nick. Nick's a graphic designer, in case you guys didn't know. So Nick can help me with my um, terrible UI skills. Tell me when I'm making a mistake, Nick. All right, here's my label. Font. I have a bunch of fonts already pre-made. And I think I want this big font. And let's just look at it and see how it looks. Level name here. Align it center. Right? Alright. Um, and then... I think I need a signal. So here we're getting a little coding. This button is going to change. <clears throat> but if you look at this pattern, what I have here is it's basically a custom control. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Hey, by the way, um, if you guys are interested in doing a uh, game jam, Vim Jam is coming up end of September or middle of September, middle ish to the end of September. It's a week long jam. Vim Jam, it's on itch.io. Um, I'm sure Nick has a link to it if he wants to post it in. Uh, but we're up to almost a thousand participants right now. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Everybody should join it. I'm going to join it. And I haven't done a jam in a while. They stress me out. But a, uh, the, especially the two day, or even the last one I did was a 12 hour jam. Oof. Oof. Just wiped me out, man. But this one's a week long, uh, so I can spend three or four days on it. You know, don't have to kill myself uh, to finish it. 
but I can spend enough time on it that I can get it to a level of quality that I like. That's, that's the hope anyway. So this guy is a control, right? It's one of these level button controls. It's basically a custom control. And the way I do those patterns is I'll create a control and I'll create signals of how I want this control to behave. And then if I use other controls inside of it, like labels and stuff, um, this thing is my interface and it just basically controls these things. Um, so from here, from this level, it just looks like, you know, I've got pressed button and I've you know I've got this other stuff um, but I don't need to worry about anything that's inside of this this thing takes care of its insides by itself so I'm gonna change this implementation at the inside uh, today but the interface doesn't change right so all my other scenes will just keep working even though the implementation on the inside changes <clears throat> and what I think I need is uh, maybe I don't no I don't think I need to change anything there because I've already got a focused right um, this thing already has a focused event And what I want it to do is when the focus enters here, this button, I want to, oh, maybe I do need another, another uh, signal because when it focuses, I want to get the name of the level. So let's create in my level button, we'll create a signal here. Call it signal focus entered level, right? And do I need that? I need that. It's always confused me, this parameter thing on here. I think it'll work without it. We'll see. Why does that give me a red? Focus entered already exists. Let's call it um, focused. Sure. And I want to say emit signal. Focused with the level name, which is that. Yeah. So then in here, I can say when this level gets focused, let's delete that one. When this level gets focused, uh, I'm going to call a uh, level focused I'm going to connect that and it's going to be passed in a uh, level and then I can do campaign.get level uh, level Ugh, I've, got, I've got three words <laughs> This is the level, and this is the level, and this is the level. Um, I want to get just the name of this thing. Uh, I can't remember how to get the name. Um, let's call this level data. And return, oh no, uh, I want to do level name dot text equals level data level name, I think.
get campaign name, get level key. I should have a get level name, but I don't. And this has tripped me up before. My own API is bad. Let's just print this out and see what it is. Hey, thanks for the follow. I don't know how to say your name. I'm going to I'm going to guess right now. Uh Azuritko. Is it Japanese maybe? Azuritko? Anyway, thanks for the follow. Welcome. All right. What is level data? It's an object and it has these members no. It's a config file. Okay. It's a config file. What's it print? Yeah, that's not very useful. It's right there. That's what I want. That's the pattern for getting the name. That should work. Let's see. There it is. So it's right there. Uh, I need to move it up two pixels. To make room for the commas. And let's do a thingy here, we'll say. Uh, level like that. And let's make this left aligned. Well, I mean, that needs some work. I don't like the way that looks. Um, I don't think I like having the box around it, for one. It feels too constrained. It feels, there's not enough space around it, basically. Um, I need to make it bigger. Let's do that right now. Let's just make it bigger. Like that. Space is important. Gotta have some room for things to breathe and be free. Otherwise it feels cramped. It just gives you an awkward bad feeling, you know. If things don't have enough room. So now it's got some room, and I need to move it away from the edge a little bit. Like that. Hmm. 
one tip I'll give you if you know if you're ever doing UI stuff like this is um, you know sometimes there's a temptation to go oh I want to move this 10 pixels down and so it must be 10 pixels over but in fact depending on the shape of your glyphs in here the letters you might want to change the spacing a little bit because there's you know the number of pixels right but if this started with a T for example it would feel different see this feels much farther over now from here so I would want to move this in a little bit actually to make it feel the same as the L felt but if you switch it back to the L now it feels too close so I need to move it out so what you do is you go you have to look at it you know you do it by feel instead of by exact numbers I don't know if there's a word for that I like that better. All right. Mm. I gotta erase. I gotta do some erasing. I love that about Godot is that um, as soon as I change the art over here, you know, I can erase, save, flip back, and there it is. Fix it, save, flip back, now it's changed. Very seamless. Uh, so I move that up. Uh, I actually need to move this whole thing. Um, it's a little unbalanced now. That might not be bad, but I'm just gonna move the whole thing down. Just a skosh. Um, I know this is kind of uh, I don't know if this is interesting to you guys or not it seems boring to me <laughs> uh, but uh, so I mean if you guys want to uh, ask me questions or talk about other stuff while I'm doing this I'm kind of on autopilot here um, I'm going to, the next thing I'm going to do is rework the animations and stuff in here. And right now I've got a button with normal pressed hover and disabled. And what I'm going to do is replace this button with, um, probably several different animated sprites and just control which one is playing, uh, from here. And so I'm going to draw some normal pressed hover and disabled states for this. Um, but so while I'm doing that, if anybody has questions about, you know, anything, we can just talk while I'm doing it. Uh, what sort of thing am I looking for doing for the jam? So I don't know. The, the jam has a uh, focus, quote unquote, focus of collectibles. So there's going to be some sort of overall, all, like overall arching concept of collectible games, right? Uh, which could be anything. You could collect points you could collect flowers you could collect animals you could collect uh, you know it could be a farming game where you're collecting plants seeds it could be collecting loot 
you know, gold pieces. I mean, that would fall in there, right? But then there's going to be a theme, right? Um, and the theme is super secret and nobody's announced it yet. And uh, you can try bugging Nick about it, but he won't tell you. And um, um, I don't know. So some kind of collectible game. And I was thinking maybe, because I've always wanted to do a like sort of twin stick shooter, kind of like Robotron. <clears throat> but I don't know exactly what you'd collect in that game. The hand theme. <laughs> um, but maybe it would be like some sort of twin stick shooter where you have to, you know, just kill everything on the screen, blow stuff up. But also there are maybe little things scattered around the level that you have to go get. Um, which is, in my mind, it's sort of like a... I don't know. It would, it's sort of like a constraint in a way uh, where you have to move to certain places. You'll have to move to certain areas of the, of the screen to collect those things. And that by nature of having to collect those things, it'll force you to move um, to certain areas. And maybe if even the things that you have to collect are timed and they pop up at different times, it could force you to have a certain pattern of movement in order to do well. Um, so maybe, um, I don't know, maybe you'd have to collect them in the correct order even. So you'd end up drawing star shapes while you're trying to survive the onslaught or, I don't know, something something along those lines is kind of what I'm thinking of. I have a couple of weeks to still think about it, um, but it's just been, I just, I like that theme, that focus of collectibles. It's, it's, it's given me a lot of things to, I've just been kind of daydreaming about it. <clears throat> Hey, Funky Monk. Uh, stream's going great. We're doing UI stuff. And while I'm doing it, you know, I was just saying to everybody, if, you, if anybody has any questions about anything, we can talk while I'm doing it. Probably going to stream another 45 minutes or so. My, uh, my daughter's actually coming back uh, today. And she's on the road right now. Uh, her... One of her roommates came down with COVID, uh, so she abandoned ship, <laughs> and she's headed back home. So she'll be here for another couple weeks. A couple weeks while that resolves itself. Crazy how the, how much this thing is changing everybody's lives. It's not an easy year. It's already September, everybody. It's September. <laughs> I want a do-over on 2020. Ugh, that's a bummer, dude. She tested herself before, um, before you know, a few weeks ago, and she was clear. And um, she doesn't have any symptoms. And her roommate, who's got it, she tested positive, but... Um, you know, she was self-quarantining and isolating. So the odds that my daughter got it from her are just very low. Um, but when she gets here, we're going to set her up in my bedroom for a few days and just kind of isolate her there. And I figure in a few days, if she doesn't ha still doesn't have any symptoms, we're probably fine. I'm, uh, I'm not too worried about getting it. I know. These are the things you have to think about now. It's crazy. <coughs> oh, ooh, excuse me. All right, so let's make some buttons. Um, so the first thing I want to do, making some buttons, is 
I'm just going to prototype in some buttons real quick. And we'll just get a feel for size. So let's imagine the buttons were this size. And I had 24 of them. I need to fit 24 of them on here. So if I did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then another sector. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? 24 levels. And then... When one is highlighted, when one's selected, it would be like this and, you know, doing some kind of cool, like, pulsating animation, right? And when one is locked, like, imagine all these are locked, they'll be like, I don't know. Oh, you know, maybe they'll be like, question mark. Maybe something like that. Little question marks. <coughs> <coughs> Damn it. I was just talking about COVID-19 and now I can't stop coughing. <laughs> I swear it's not. I don't have it. I haven't left this house in, in a week. <laughs> I've got some dust in my throat. We were just cleaning up upstairs and I've got dust in my throat. I swear. All right, so this size is three, four, five, six. Let me just measure it. That's eight by eight. Okay, so my buttons are going to be small. They're going to be little eight by eight buttons, I think. I could maybe go as big as 12 by 12. Maybe like that. Twelve would work. I, I tend to think bigger is better. You don't want things to be too small. Um, but you don't want it to look like a bunch of... You know, if you make them too big, it, they're going to end up looking like um, <laughs> children's toys or something, right? Twelve by twelve works better, I think, because then you can... You know, you can put question mark inside because that's eight pixels so that would be the locked levels oops right something like that See what I mean about feel? Like you take these two circles, right? This is just one pixel difference. Same size circle. Actually, that circle is very kind of derpy. Same size circle, but I just position them slightly differently. <clears throat> and yeah, I don't like either one. Maybe I need um, a slightly oblong shape. Don't like that either. Well, let's just go with red circles for now. Let's go with 12 by 12. <laughs> Dust in through 20. Yeah, let's go with 12 by 12. And um, that way we can do like a bigger circle for when it's selected. We still have room for that. Uh, we could put a little indicator inside when it's locked. Maybe it's a question mark. Maybe it's something else. <clears throat> um... 
we can connect the dots with lines, right? Little, uh, maybe two pixel wide lines. Like that to draw our little constellations. and then go to the next sector. Yep, for sure, they're all gonna be animated. So the uh, the red ones, the, the ones that you're not selecting will have a little idle. The locked ones will have a little idle animation. When they're selected, they'll have an active beep -bing, beep -bing kind of thing going on. <clears throat> ones that you've already completed should look a little different as well. The completed ones should be green. So I've already done this level, and I've already done this level, and I've already done this level, and this one's unlocked, and I can do it, and these are locked, and I can't do them. Those will probably be gray or something. So I need a <clears throat> active, unlocked, completed, and disabled. Yeah, and I think we can do all that in one sprite sheet. <clears throat> so we'll just have one shared texture for everybody. And uh, yeah, let's just try it and see what happens. So let's go 16 by 16. No, let's go 24 by 24. No. <laughs> I, I typically will make my sprites a lot bigger than they need to be, right? Uh, so this is 12 by 12 right here. But you need to make it bigger so that you can add some sparkle, some animation, some you know, you gotta have room to do stuff with it, right? <clears throat> so let's do this. Let's do this first. Uh, let's say we're gonna do four frames for each one, right? And we'll tag those as normal. Tag these as selected. Tag these as um, locked. And tag these as completed. Okay. And we can bring up our preview again and we can play it. That way we can see the animation going while we're working on it. <coughs> And uh, if I copy this, we'll see it stop blinking. See? So it's only playing the animation in this tag. If I go to this section, it's blank because now it's playing these frames. And now it's playing these frames, and now it's playing these frames. So I want to play these frames so I can see what's going on here. So this is our normal, and we'll have it do like a little... I don't know. I don't know how much juice I want to add to this, but let's do a little breathing animation first. Mm. Have it take a deep breath. Doop, doop. Do, uh, what did I do? Mm -hmm. So my, uh, I want to have my onion skin set up correctly with the red-blue tint so I can see what's... Previous frames are red, next frames are blue. And this one, this one's out of place.
pretty hyper. works. That works for now. Let's see. Uh, and let's copy all of those here for the selected frames, but we'll change the color. And then we'll add a like let's do a, another layer. So <clears throat> this will be our base layer base and this will be our like I don't know I don't know what you call it like a effects layer so we can do a I might need to add more frames for this we can do a circle something like that and then just have it grow out. slow down here and we'll just erase portions of it so it kind of dissolves away and this one will erase a couple of portions of it not as much here we go let's move these over and add one more frame right here. So that's the selected one. Locked ones, um, same deal, but let's make them gray, 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 gray. Completed ones will do green, 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 green. So we've got normal, selected, locked, completed. For my locked, uh, the effect layer will just be a uh, question mark for now. Put it in the right layer. And I copy that to all of these. Uh -huh. Let's do that. Ooh, that might get hairy. I don't want too much blinking on the screen because initially you're going to see one level you can play and 23 that are locked, right? And you don't want them all. <clears throat> all right, and then this, let's make the unfinished or the completed levels be a little bit more chill. They'll just hold still. I might need to add more frames in here because I don't feel like four is enough. Hmm, that's fine. It's fine for now. You know, I always think about like, you know, this this number of animation frames isn't enough, or this is too many, 
And I'm always thinking ahead to like, gosh, I don't want to redo these, you know. If I add four more frames in each one, I'll have eight frames. And that'll make the animation better. But I don't want to do eight frames of animation right now. And then later, I don't want to redo them. Um, and, but if I make eight now, maybe I'm not going to use all eight. So it's just a waste of time. The bottom line is I'm going to redo it. I always redo it. So just um, it's fine. Level chooser textures. Let's call this level buttons. Mission buttons. Whoops. Let's save it as the right kind of file. And then we want to export a sprite sheet. And we'll say, it doesn't really matter, but let's just say uh, four columns. Because that'll be nice and tidy, right? Export that. All right. Now, there's two ways to do this. One way is to create animated sprite for each one. And one way is to create a regular sprite in an animation player. And I think for this, I'm just going to go animated sprite. Ace format is the format for a sprite. It's just a binary format for a sprite. And it has all this information in it. Uh, the layers, the animation frames, the blend modes, you know. It's like a PSD file is a Photoshop file. An ACE file is a is an ACE sprite file. And so I think somebody has made a importer in Godot for ACE sprite files. Um, you might be able to find it in the asset library if I'm remembering correctly. So you can just use the ACE sprite files directly, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, if nobody has, somebody should do that. That would be cool. Uh, but what I do is then I export a sprite sheet, which is just a PNG file. And then I use that in the engine. Oh, you can use either one, Ace or Ace Sprite. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> I think I do the same. I go back and forth. But uh, yeah, see, Ace... A sprite, it they're the same. It's fine. Both of them work. All right, so I'm going to delete this button, and that's going to cause my code to break, but that's okay. I'm going to add a uh, animated sprite. And yeah, that's fine. And I need to create frames. And I can do that by using my sprite sheet. Normally you would use this, right, to add a single texture and you could add as many single textures as you like, but you can also use a sprite sheet. And I wanna do that, go to my level, um, level chooser textures folder, get my sprite sheet. And then I'm gonna say, use these frames, right? And I'll call that the um, normal and then I'll have it play at 12 let's just look at it and see how it looks right that's fine <clears throat> and then let's add a uh, another one same sprite sheet but we're going to take these four and that'll be my selected now that one run at 12. And then I'm going to add 
Same sprite sheet again. Call this one locked. Maybe we'll leave that one at five. And then we'll add um, completed sprite sheet. Right? Normal. Selected, locked, completed. So you see I've got this animated sprite with the different things, right? The different animations. So when, depending on the level that you set in here and its state, you're going to change the animation. Um, yeah. So I was using a Godot button for this before, but I'm not using a button anymore. So I'm not going to have button disabled or button pressed, right? Um, I'm going to yeah I want these to be let's just call this button again And so I want button dot animation. Is there a play? No, there is. Uh, play it normal, right? But if it's locked, I want it to play locked. And here I want it to play. Um, um, here I want to play selected, and here I'll have it play, ooh, this is tricky, right? Because it, it would have to play either, um, hmm. All right, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll fix this in a second. Because when you, because you could select a, uh, what do you call it, a uh, a level that is disabled, or you could select a level that is um, completed already, or you could just have a regular unlock level that you haven't played yet. And this would need to go back. It would need to detect what is the status of the level and then go back to that. And then this, similarly, I need to say, is this level locked? Um, and if the level is locked, then you can't select it. That's what this is saying. But I don't think I want that to happen. I want it to select the level, even if it's locked. Yeah, that's what I, that, that's exactly right, Funky Monk. I think that's what I need to do. I'll need to create a different animation for locked, unlocked, and completed levels. I can't just have a one selected, right, that's generic. Because, you know, I mean, I could, but I want to be able to, if you go over a locked level, I want it to be highlighted, but I want you to still see that it's locked. And then I can say if um, no. Well, this needs to. This one will need to pl play the correct one, and this will need to play the correct one. So I want to create, I want to move this up. I want to hoist this up here. 
here. Okay. So this is all of the levels that I have. This this is all the levels. Um, that gets set here. This is the current level for this button. So you can say, make this a button for level one, level two, level three, right? This is whether this current level is unlocked or not. Um, and then this tells you whether you've played the level or not. So I can do that but then here right this will be um, complete is false complete is true and there's probably a way I can use an enum or something Let's see, what would the enum be? Enum status um, unlocked, locked, played, right? Status, let's do this. Not, right? So this would become um, because in theory you shouldn't ever be locked. You can either be locked. But you can't be locked and unlocked. You can't be locked and played. You can be played, but you can't be played and locked. You have to be played and unlocked. It would be both. You'd be played and unlocked. But played is takes precedence over unlocked. And, or you can be unlocked, in which case you wouldn't be played. Yeah, so they're all mutually exclusive. So yeah, this this is fine. Let's call that normal just to go, well, let's call that unlocked, locked, and uh, uh, completed. Just to try to make my animations and my enums um, the same name. Unlocked, selected, locked, completed, right? Unlocked, locked, completed. There won't be an enum for selected. I guess there could be. I don't think I'll use it, but I guess there could be. And then this will be there, unlocked, right? And the first thing I'll do is I'll say status equals locked or unlocked. But here I'll say status equals locked. Right? Here, I'll be status equals played. And then 
this one can just be... I don't need this variable. Why is that red? Oh. Completed. And I don't need completed here. So the levels will either be unlocked, or they'll be locked, or they'll be completed. <clears throat> so here, let's not deal with this right now. Here I can just say if status equals um, completed, then button play completed. If status equals locked, then play locked. And if status is unlocked, then play unlocked. And for now, they're all going to play the same selected animation. I'll change that in a minute. <clears throat> okay, so that's another thing needs to change. Let's put this here and we'll transform it to actually yeah well yeah let's just move it down here it doesn't matter really let's do that what was the size of this let's go 32 by 32 32 by 32 put our button at 16, 16. And let's turn these labels off for now. Let's just get rid of them because I'm going to move those over to the stats area anyway. I'm going to move them all here into this box. So since I've deleted those, um, I think I'm going to see there'll be errors in here. No, if status what? This is where a uh, strongly typed language would be a little bit better because it would make it, the refactoring a little easier. Um, for now, I'm gonna I'm gonna move this code someplace else. Um, but for now, I just want to comment it out so that it doesn't cause any errors, and then I can run the chooser. Let's keep, I guess let's keep the label. And then let's look at the inspector for this guy. you oops we're gonna put you right there see what happens why is that circle so messed up I mean it works right 
Let's duplicate it and call this level two and move it there. Oh, I've got a rotation on it. That's why it's acting weird. Do I have a rotation on the... Nope. And we'll call this one level three. All right. All right, and then if I go into, where are my settings for this stuff? So I can go into the level settings, uh, which are, here, it's just a flat text file, and I can tell it, um, yeah, just, I, I've never played this campaign before, I'm just going to delete it all. So now when I run the game, they should all be locked except level one. All right, you can select it, but if you try to play it, it gives you the error. And this one, if you try to play it, Gives you the ready. And it goes back to the, its original state. Yeah. So, looking at this animation, I definitely want to add more frames. I think four is not enough. It's just not um, as smooth as I would like. Um, for some of the other animations, like this one, four is fine. But for the selected, I definitely want more. Definitely, definitely want more. And I think I was smart enough to put selected at the end. No, <laughs> it was not. So uh, when I add more frames here, it's going to push out locked and completed. It's going to throw off the sprite sheet. And I'm going to have to just rebuild the other animations. But it went pretty fast. You guys saw how fast it was to make those. Um, uh, so it should be pretty easy. Um, and anyway, I want to have different... I want to have different selected animations. Uh, yeah, exactly, Nick. I want to I want to show you have a selected level. This is a selected level you can play, but here's a selected level you can't play and the selection indicator needs to be different, right? So I need two different selection highlights. One for levels you can play and one for levels you can't play. And one for levels you've already played. I need three different level selection highlights. Yeah, so I think in theory, uh, well, let's do one more thing. So the level you have selected, I want to put some stats here, right? And the stats are the stats are these things, right? I want time. I want rank. I want score. Yeah, let's do those. <clears throat> and that will all go in chooser because chooser has a focus thing where it gets the level data, right? It puts the name up there. But I also wanted to do this stuff. I get the stats for this level. Right. I have an 
if stats. I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna do that. So I need a and remember now this now this is working in the chooser again. So <clears throat> remember before I did all that status stuff. So that's in the level button, which is just the button itself, right? And so the button knows this, the current level that it's looking at, right? It's this. Uh, it's this exported variable level, right? It knows the level number that it wants. It gets the status of that level, has its own enums. So it's keeping track of this one level, the status of this one level. And one of the things it does is when it gets highlighted, um, when it gets focused, it sends a signal back up to whoever's listening with the level name, the path to the level, the ID of the level, essentially. And then that's the chooser. The chooser is listening. So the chooser is this, right? And it knows about all the different levels that are here. There's one node for each one. And... Um, So this is where it's listening for that event from the level, right? When that level gets focused, it calls this method here and it passes in the level name, the ID. So then I can get the name of the level and I can get the stats for the level and I can set some labels and I'm calling them time and rank. And we can put those, we can just make some new labels and just put them right here. Um, yeah, so we'll put, we'll add a new label and we'll call it time and we'll put it right here and then we'll make another one, we'll call it rank and we'll put it There, time, rank. And I think I probably want, well, I'm probably gonna end up with a grid or a V box or something here to just make the alignment and everything easier. We'll see. Let's just see if it works. In principle. So right now it's zeros, right? There's no data, so let me play this level. And then we'll see what happens. Gonna set a new high score. Menu, start, look at that. Seven seconds, S rank. And this was, haven't played, haven't played. Perfect. Um, so I'll add score, I'll add whether the level is locked or not. Like this whole thing will probably change if it's locked. <sighs> yeah, anyway, this is shaping up. I'm, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. It's just, you know, it's all very fiddly UI stuff. Um, but that's fine. It is, uh, it's hard work. But I'm already liking this a lot better than the old level chooser. Mm -hmm. 
And it works with the gamepad. Yep, perfect. So it's all polished at this point. I need to add. Um, I need to add more animations for um, selected, unlocked, selected, locked, and selected completed. Um, I need to add some labels in here. I need to add some sort of grid overlay and um, sector divisions so you can see which sector you're in and what levels are coming up. I think I want to move this back button somewhere else, um, maybe, maybe over here or maybe up here, maybe here, something. I'm not sure, um, but I, I think I want to get it out of this area. We'll see. It's it's very big. Um, and I want to add some text on here that shows, um, I don't know, maybe something like collect, collect all reactors to unlock the next sector. I might need to move this up a little bit, steal a little room for this and add it in here. I don't know, but I might just put that on a different screen too. I'm thinking uh, when you select a level, there might be tips right here before you go. Or maybe here, maybe on this screen I'll have some tips, right? Like right below this text, it'll be tip, collect all levels, collect all reactors to to unlock the next sector. Tip, gravity is a thing. Uh, tip, your shields can take one hit and then they auto-regenerate. Stuff like that. Hmm. But, I mean, this level, if I am gonna do this whole idea where I have different sectors and you need to collect the reactors in that sector to unlock the next sector, then I need to have <laughs> It, I need to have something on here that shows you how many reactors you've collected in this sector and how many you need to, to unlock, right? So I'll need some more UI on here somewhere showing you um, what you still need to collect to unlock the next sector and, and maybe indicate that right on here to show, yes, I've, I've gotten the reactor for this one, I've gotten the reactor for this one, but not this one. So you know which one you need to go back and get the reactor from. Yeah, I'm definitely going to need that. I don't know. Lieutenant might have to go. There might not be enough room on here for her. Maybe I'll shrink her down. Um, anyway, so this works in principle. I like it. Still a lot of work to do on it, <laughs> but I'm going to call it for right now because it's an hour and a half. My daughter should be getting here any minute. Um, oh, hey, uh, how, how long have you been into game developing? So I've been doing game development for years and years and years. Um, you can go to my um, itch page and see a um, bunch of jam games and stuff that I've done. Uh, go to gravityace.com. And then from there you can follow the link to itch and then from there you can follow the link to my profile uh, but then you can see all the game jams i've done and i've done a lot uh, it's been a long time uh, it started way back i don't even know when it was um, my first thing that got me really into it was uh, this thing called one game a month um, but this will be my first commercial release my first commercial release this is the first one i'm going to plan on selling and this game I've been working on for a couple of years. Far too long. Um, but thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I think the game looks great too, if I do say so myself. Uh, so that's it, guys, for today. Uh, it was fun hanging out with you on a Saturday. Go to gravityace.com. Join the Discord. Uh, come uh, follow me on Twitter. Wish us the game on Steam. Please tell everybody you know about the game. I need all the help I can get to make this a financial success of some kind. <laughs> and um, 
I'll see you guys again Monday. That's uh, that's the next um, scheduled stream will be Monday night Pacific time around six. Uh, don't worry if you missed it. I'm going to be uploading it to YouTube right now. <laughs> so you'll be able to see it in about an hour. All right, that's it. Thanks again, guys. Catch you later.